Well, it's an issue that affects too many women in our province, domestic violence. Half of all women here, 15 and older, will experience violence during their lives. In some cases, the emotional scars will also last a lifetime. And then there's the worry that it might happen again, especially since in some cases, court decisions don't offer much protection. We'll hear from two women now. The first had an ex-boyfriend who went to jail for raping and beating her. Now she's seen him outside her window. And the second woman is a friend of the first and she lived with violence for many years and they both talked to here and now's Megan McCabe. You know, I know I'm going to be suffering the rest of my life because of him and what he did to me. When she felt he was too controlling, this woman, who asked to be anonymous, broke up with her boyfriend. He showed up at her door, raped and beat her. I don't feel safe. It's hard. <laughs> And like he's walking around like a, a pillar of the community, like he did nothing wrong. He was convicted of sexual assaults, assault causing bodily harm, and forcible confinement. Sentenced to over two years in federal prison, a DNA sample, and registered as a sex offender, he was released on parole in order to stay away from her. Since his parole was over last October, within a month, um, I've noticed somebody coming around our property. She approached that person one day and got chills. He was her rapist. Well, I'm home alone. I'm sitting on the couch and like, ah, my neck hurts from looking at the window to see if he's around. It's just, I mean, I go to bed at night and I sleep with a bat underneath my bed. What's worse, her abuser is reportedly planning to develop the property next door. Why would he want to live near me? Why? It don't, it don't make any sense to me at all. To me, I think it's just his way of still trying to control me. This has been her life for the past year. You know, I'm still the one that's being punished for his crime. The court couldn't grant her a peace bond, saying despite the abusive history, he doesn't pose a physical threat. A piece of paper is not going to do anything anyway, but like I said, I just want to live in peace and and to be protected by the justice system. And like for girls and women who are going through the same thing, I just want to be a voice too for these people that cannot speak out or it's too late for them to speak out. She feared for her life the night she was attacked, worried it would be too late for her to speak out about intimate partner violence, a fear her friend Georgina McGraw has felt as well. I lived with my abuser for five weeks after getting out of intensive care and out of the hospital. And I was raped twice during that time. And I was told all the time that his biggest mistake that he made was he didn't murder me that night. And the only way that I could get him out of my house was to give a statement to the police. At first, McGraw was too scared to give that statement. When she did, her ex left the country, so he was never charged. She still lives in fear. Day-to-day -day things, somebody raising a voice, uh, somebody saying a word that he would have said, someone speaking in the terms that he would have spoken, everything comes back. McGraw now advocates to protect women and girls from the violence she and her friend suffered. Because I don't think I should have had to live those five weeks the way that I did and the way that my children did. And unfortunately, until there are changes made, this is the way it's going to continue. Tomorrow night, we'll take a look at some of the changes McGraw, her friend, and other advocates are asking for. Megan McCabe, CBC News, St. John's.